<laughs> Are you ready to begin? Stepping up, they know they want the spike. Big Sundering catches Ooh. Lee Ming, and she is down fast. As these two teams out of CE East are just punching each other in the mouth right now. Purification salvo, Ring of Frost. This is a blood bath. Can they get the core though? 22%. And that is a triple kill. Might be the end of it. And that is oh. it. Bumper one is over. Now playing bumper two. <laughs> well done, heroes. And after bumper two, you'll take this one. for it. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday Night Showdown. I am one of the casters this evening, Bahamut. I'm joined by Mongos. Are you ready for this best of three series between Heroes of the Storm, Heroes, oh my god, Heroes of the United States versus Gilly Shark? Yeah, not just a, what should be a, a great matchup, but uh, Baja, I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe the most consistent Longest lasting NGS rivalry we have had between these two teams for the last couple seasons. All of their games have been so, so good. Regular season and back to back matchups in the division playoff finals. This has been, there's been a season story between these two teams, and I am itching to get into it. I can actually see the, uh, the the teams are itching to get into it as well, as I'm like, yeah, we got 30 seconds, we're just going to hype you up a bit. It's like, 30 minutes? No, it's, uh, so yeah, no, we're, we're, we're going to get into this, but I'm going to go ahead and push the button, because I am ready to get in to our first matchup here between these two teams. And, uh, Mongoose, we had some, some map bans before we all this happened, and I'm sure the audience would love to know what those were. They were, and well, you know what? Uh, I can bring those up real quick because we have screens for that. But it was uh, Towers of Doom and Battlefield of Eternity uh, banned out. And uh, Pick of Gilly Shark taking us to uh, Dragonshire. I love Dragonshire as an opening map here. It's it's really good. You can kind of force out some rotations on the enemy team. We can see some some interesting solo lane pickups. We often see a higher priority, priority onto Dahaka on a map like this because of how strong he is in that solo lane. Chen's popped up here and there, but as we get into this draft, we're going to be seeing the standard ban against Gilly Shark is going to be that Samaro, but a noob rack taken out by Gilly Shark, not wanting to deal with the dive initiation, excuse me, the web wrap, as well as just the overall stun CC train that noob rack can bring in. And, and beetles are just annoying to squash. And uh, that Samaro ban, that is uh, one of those heroes uh, that you don't see too much of, but you know when it's played, you got to get it off there. And uh, uh, Gilly Shark not really able to spring that one on anybody anymore it is a known commodity and i imagine they're not getting it uh getting it too much this season no i, I don't think we're going to be seeing any more of the uh Samuro popping up at least in any sort of surprising manner here we do have the zero tool banned out zero tool seeing a lot of priority in that ban phase because of how powerful he can become after that 16 level uh or that talent here, excuse me, and just being able to then burst the enemy heroes so very powerfully. But we get into this first pick on the size of on the side of heroes of the United States as they have first pick. And I wonder if we see the priority onto the Blaze. No, it's gonna be Joan, of course. They have a player named Blaze who never plays Blaze. And alright. <laughs> oh an insta, like no hesitation, Rex our uh Kelthos and uh I think you just casted Gilly Shark. I'm pretty sure they heavily prioritized that Rexar uh, in the set they just had against uh, Team Training Wheels. Um, I Actually, King in the past few weeks, they've been they've been prioritizing Rexar ever since he's had the little changes that came in, and and I say little, but it's pretty impactful. I think it's like a 200 plus percent increase onto Misha's damage or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I, I was watching that game. I know Team Training Wheels pretty well. My brother actually uh, is Giggle Schmack, plays on that team, so I watch them uh, pretty regularly. And they highly prioritize Rexar too, and, I, and I'm sure that was uh, Gilly kind of ripping it away from them. I don't know if that was intentional or they just like it just as much. Clearly they do. But a Rexar kind of moving his way up in the meta... I love I love the Rexar in solo lanes lately. I love that it's it's popping up so often. We do have the uh, Sylvanas ban out going into against Gilly Shark as well. So it looks like Heroes of the United States might have been watching that first matchup that we had uh, just an hour or so ago. 
and uh, taking a little bit of a note just to get rid of that. But we do know that uh, there are some other heroes that can be picked up regardless. Zul will be that last. Same thing. Like, it's it's that Towers of Doom game that we just had. Zul is uh, pretty powerful, and to get rid of that is a great benefit. We get into the later half of the draft here as Toronto will be picked up with Arthas on top of that. A lot of comfort picks and a lot of strong synergies that are going to be coming out in favor for Gilly Shark as the last two picks from Heroes of the United States are going to be coming in in just a second. And let's see who these... Uh, who these guys want to round out the draft, Baja? I'm going to say with one thing that jumps out to me is uh, just a short while ago at the beginning of the NGS season, Dibbles was all over the place, and he is completely MIA. This draft, is that a result of, of the team's preferences, or has he really uh, fallen out of the meta that far as, wow, we got super spice here with a uh, Kel'Thuzad Thrall coming out for Hodus. It's a lot of good setup with that Thrall being able to go ahead and have the Sunder for the intro, as well as Kael'Thuzad is able to stack in those rotations between top and, or excuse me, mid and bottom, and just overall in any sort of brawl over a point situation, that is really where Kael'Thuzad starts to pop off quite a bit. I really like that pickup for them. A lot of good synergies, and being able to rip the soul right at the end with Malthio might be possible with that last rights. Rainer, though, rounds out the rest of the draft for Gilly Shark. Continued. Uh, damage to be putting out. It pairs well with the Arthas and the Taronda. Rexar has a stun. Kael'thas has the gravity laps. Overall, between the two teams, I gotta say, I think I think both of them got everything they wanted outside of uh, maybe a Samuro, Savannas, and uh, that that Zul. But and that that Tracer seems a little targeted. Regardless, I think both these teams have really solid drafts, and we're gonna see what they'll be able to do in this in this uh, best of three matchup that we're gonna be going into on Dragonshire. Mongoose, I I love what we're getting yeah that uh arthas uh you know rainer the peanut butter and jelly the perma slows with the ace in the hole is just basically a permanent damage buff to rainer i love playing rainer with like arthas or uh, jaina is another one that pairs really well with him so it's gonna be a uh, pretty much auto mode for stark there, just going to town on whoever arthas just happens to be sitting on even the tanks are, are they're gonna feel that they're uh they'll real real quick We'll see if they're able to shred it as uh, Mongoose. We get into this. Game number one, really quickly as we're loading in. Who do you says takes it? Well, first Gut. first thing Gut I want... What, I mean, you have to go with Gilly Shark with the season that they're having right now, right? They have been so, so good this season. Just taking everybody out. Uh, having said that, if, if somebody knows them well enough Amazing. to throw them off their game, it, it's got to be Hodus. All right, well, we'll see if they're able to do it. We actually have Hodas on the left-hand side. We've got Blaze on the Kel'Thuzad, Watson on the Joanna, Jub-Jub on the Malfurion, Waterboy TDK on the Malfiel, and Sly DH on that Thrall. And the red team. First place, Gilly Shark. We have Stark on Raynor, Kagi Girl on Kel'Thas, Jinxie Cat on Arthas. Oh, I'm going to say his name wrong every time. Kaimo Tripson? Did I get it? No, that's actually... You had it. That was net dead nice. on. On Tyrande. And who is on Rexar? I can't see, but it is going to be Chess Looter playing Misha and Rexar. And we'll go ahead and get into our rotations here between these lanes as it looks like we have the initial start from Heroes of the United States doing that off the bat. We do also have that Crash Lightning from the Thrall and being in the four member rotation that is going to be easily stacked up, but. Here's the thing, if you can see them doing these off off rotations to make sure that Kel'Thuzad is not stacking, that's a big play that you can make on the side of here's uh, on the side of Gilly Shark to make sure that it's it's not the case. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I don't know which which side has an advantage really in this uh, kind of clear and rotate, but what I think might be a little uh, more telling as a Jinxie Cat taking a lot of poke in the bottom is that Rexar Misha Malthiel matchup in the top because uh, whoever wins that is really going to force some tough decisions out of the other side. Yeah, that solo lane could really get a lot of value, but here we have a huge combo coming out. Gilly Shark taking a lot of damage. That will be the root coming out from Blaze on that Kael'Thuzad. Watson taking a lot themselves. We do have the rotation coming in from Chess Leader. Stun coming out onto Watson. They seem to be on an island away from their friendly team. A little bit more damage comes out, and Joanna taken down here. First kill of the game over to Gilly Shark. Yeah, anytime you've got that uh, Kel'Thuzad, which we talked about the X-Factor, something uh, Otis can do to get the advantage over kind of King of D Div B East right now, Gilly Shark. Uh, Kel'Thuzad's definitely an X-Factor, man. Once he gets stacked, he just starts deleting people off the battlefield. We saw Blaze right there got, um, what, three, four stacks just off that little uh, camp invade there. So 
I uh, really want to watch this game once Blaze is fully stacked. The big thing is going to be finishing out that Master of the Cold Dark. Thir 15 stacks will get you the uh, Glacial Spike so you can combo into that, but the, the 30 gets you this 75% spell power increase that is huge for a Kildazad who knows how to land their combos, and Blaze is definitely someone who knows how to do that. Mid lane has a bit of a back and forth between Kagekiri and Watson trying to pick up that Dragonite just stalling each other out. Waterboy is going to be converting over top lane, Chesley just going to look for some more so because they've fallen a little bit behind in experience, but not by much. as I love something to clear out in this bottom lane, as actually the key uh, combo trims are going to be rotating up there into Watson to make sure that they do not get the pickup on that Dragonite. That is a big thing not to give that over this early. It is two minutes and it doesn't do a ton of damage, but it's still a very, full, very powerful CG tool. Yeah, definitely. You know, the early objectives is a huge combo there by Blaze. Took a lot of beating for it uh, as well. The uh, early Dragonites doesn't do too much, but it certainly doesn't hurt to pick it up. It's better than not grabbing it. Uh, we have this once again still in favor for the members of uh, Heroes of the United States. We've got these archers doing the most annoying thing they can do. This is just going to continue to be the back and forth. A little bit of poke damage coming out on the shrine. Jixi Cat and Stark taking a bit themselves, but as long as Combo Trips is able to keep auto attacking, they'll keep building uh, the cool or keep matching that cooldown for uh, the heal right there. Also, to note really quickly, we do have nine stacks already through on Frost Presence, so they do have the first uh, quest done. They'll be able to finish that if they can land the next one. That 30% range increase is huge for them. That's such a big tool to be able to lock down a lot of chase targets and find a couple kills here and there. It's just going to be the back and forth and looking for sevens, Mongoose. Yeah, and speaking of stacking quickly, already 12 stacks for the Kel'Thuzad here in about four minutes. That's a pretty healthy pace, as uh, Malfiel might be a little bit in trouble eating a face full of bear there in the top lane. Uh, but he's been doing a pretty solid job of trying to hold off the Misha. As teams continue to skirmish here in the bottom, Kel'Thas is rotating down now that that wave is pushed out. Gilly going to have a slight numbers advantage and Thrall pretty low. We have a little bit of a chain bomb spreading and the nice follow up. Stark giving some pepper, but that's going to be Kage Kiri with the kill steal right at the end. Dragonite available for the members of Gilly Shark, but once again, Watson in mid lane will be something very annoying to deal with because that's not the easiest hero to kind of push back when you're trying to uh, slowly pick up the Dragonite. We have both sides of that top lane going to be uh, flanked by that Rexar, but bottom lane is going to be the Bruce Camp picked up, pushed in through there. They do need to convert these back over to Gilly Shark's favor when we have that going on in the top lane. You know, I really like the patience Baja by Gilly Shark. A lot of teams, they get that kill, they really kind of really fixate on getting the Dragon Knight, but they didn't even make a play for it. They're just continuing to abuse the mercenaries, trying to take control of that bottom lane, and knowing over time that if they're successful in doing that, that will, of course, allow them to jump on that DK as another... Big combo on a Jinxie Cat. She has taken a ton of damage, but Arthas pretty durable. Walks away battered, but still around. The the big thing also is Icebound Fortitude, Mongoose. Oh it's, yeah. It's the activation for the for the 25 armor, but also it's the reducing damage when you're when you're sitting in a stun or a root. So that's just an added benefit, but that's going to be the combo coming out from Kael'thuzad, and they'll be able to pull a couple members in here. They do have 18 stacks done. We noted that before that they have that Glacial Spike. We do have also Joanna going into the Subdue at level 7, trying to find a 4-member swipe with that Punish. Very, very difficult in that, but the 80% slow hitting two enemy heroes is still very beneficial overall because you can get some nice chase with those. We do have the camp in the right-hand side pick, trying to be picked up here. Blaze scouts this out. I don't know if they're going to try and go for the invader for their own, as it's showing Blaze just on their own for this trying to maybe stack up a little bit more, but the left-hand side will be picked up. Kage going to be rotating in to help out. I think Blaze was just looking for a nice tight corridor there to pick up some stacks on that uh, Kel'Thuzad quest there. Wasn't quite able to do it, despite the ridiculous range on that chain. Raynor managed to step aside. There's that 80% slow on Arthas and Raynor, but 10s are picked up by Gilly Shark. That will signal the retreat for Heroes of the United States. Watson, very tough spot, able to proc that Iron Skin. Phoenix coming out for a Gilly Shark, and maybe now with the 10 advantage, at least for a for a short while, maybe they'll make a play here uh, on the DK now. This is in favor for Gilly Shark for now. We have Kage clearing this out. Also going to be sitting at 14 out of the 20 stacks on that Mana Addict at level 1. They're all going to be finishing out this bottom, at least for the channel for now. Just going to be holding this over. Some Dragonite's going to be available. Continue to have the push out in a lot of these lanes, but bottom... 
We have the combo chips and still rotating in, and Kage is still sitting in mid, so they're going to try and open this up a little bit further, try and take down that fort. Lane sustain's already gone as they've taken out the well. Kage rotating in, uh, posturing for an aggressive flank here. They could go for it. They're stepping up forward right now. Apparently, have Jinxie Cat in the fray of things. The rest of the team is trying to provide some support. That will be the earthquake out from the Thrall. Silence going to be out onto Jinxie Cat as well. They're trying to make sure that they have some extra healing. A nice use of the Shadow Fisher to zone them in this direction. Thrall with the root, but it doesn't get the kill. Jinxie Cat with sub 10 health right there. Combo coming out. Nice root from Alfurion. Nobody going down. A lot of buttons pressed. And everyone walks away alive. You know, when I come out of this, Baja, I'm, I'm concerned for uh, for Gilly Shark once Kel'Thuzad really gets that spell power increase because there's a lot of immobile targets. If you look at uh, the side of Gilly Shark, you know, Raynor, Arthas, Kel'Thas, Tyrande, none of them are particularly mobile heroes, and he hasn't really seemed to have a hard time hitting those chains and getting those combos. When he gets that spell power, he's going to be putting a whole lot of hurt in there. They've also finished out their phylactery stacks, I meaning they have the insta buyback if they do die, which is just such an annoying thing on Kael'thuzad. You've wiped out a lot of the good damage, but then instantaneously they're able to come back. Here's the thing, though. No one's in bottom. Everyone's rushing top, so that means there's no one available to stop the channel. And actually, they don't stay on the point long enough, and Thrall could pick this up. We do have a little bit of a couple members in mid lane. Nice use of the minions, but Jinxie Cat's so very low. They have the conversion on bottom, and that's actually Jinxie Cat making it out alive as well. Kage gonna dump the Phoenix in there just to zone and also make sure that that dragon is picked up. And now, Stark in the bottom, Chess Looter in top. They'll have to try and get the pick up in this mid lane, but they're not gonna be allowing that in, in, in mid. Kel'Thuzad, that, that Blaze is just not, not gonna be having it, as Jub Jub will be helping out as well, getting some Innervate to get the cooldown reduction as well as mana for that Kel'Thuzad. I don't know if you caught that, right before our Observer got here to mid lane, there was actually one lone lane minion that interrupted the channel. Uh, on the DK. Otherwise, that would have gone over to uh, to Hodus there. So it was a lane, lane minion MVP there for Gilly Shark preventing that DK. We have the Howling Blast come out and a Lunar Flare to try and connect as well. This will be the disengage. Earthquake was used, but so was Starfall to increase that healing out from Kaimo Trips. And this is just going to be top lane held over as bottom lane is the same thing. And we, once again, cycle through the, the Siege Giants. They haven't been picked up on the left-hand side, so they might try and go for this bottom lane engage. If they can find this in the, they can find them in this pinch point, that'll be huge for the Gilly Shark, but that doesn't seem like it's going to be the play as Siege Giants are the case. And they push that in with the stack that they already have here. And the Water Boy, a little bit low, but this is still Malthiel being able to rip soul and then heal up. Last right goes on Misha, rips it, and it counts. You know, that's one way to build up your last right stacks there. Just beat up on poor Misha. That's completely just just call PETA. Report. Malfield. You're not allowed to be doing that. But this is still bottom lane fort down. Watson trying to go for the channel. Kaimo Tripson going to have one Lunar Flare to stall this out. But I think that's as much as they'll get here. Sentinel goes out. But unfortunately, it's not enough. And first Dragonite picked up for Heroes United States. Oh, 10 minutes into this game. Does a lot of good siege value here. So we'll see it open up the mid lane. They already have the bottom lane down, so getting double catapult pressure in bottom and mid is a great to add addition for the members of Heroes of the United States. Kick away onto on the Jinxie Cat there, who will be able to just at least push in on this. And they back out, they'll wait for their fort to fall, and we can either see top lane go go we can either see them go for top lane for that catapult pressure, or they just try and open up bottom further, and that's exactly the case. Yeah, this doesn't look like a uh a game between the uh, first and eighth place teams in the standings. Gilly Shark's really been tearing it up this year. Uh, Hodus a little more up and down, but you cannot tell that at all by watching this game because these two teams back and forth so evenly matched. Uh, Hodus actually controlling the battlefield Baja without yet securing a kill. Although that might do it. Boy, that was close. Stark, very, very low. Good combo coming out from Kael'Thuzad. They do finish out the Flactory stack, so Look that entire combo was without without the stacks. That's going to be Dragonite going down. Boars are released from the Rexar. We have Phoenix coming in as well. Earthquake will be used. Buster Shield will be there. That's going to be Malfurion going down first. Kael'Thuzad trying to get the damage out. That's going to be Malfiel joining in. They do have the last rights up and available, looking for a low health target. Maybe he's going to be able to dive in beyond Jinxie Cap, but that's not the case. They take the one kill. They'll be able to back off here. And uh, with a little bit more poke out from, from Thrall trying to finish out that Crash Lightning sending on 11 stacks, we go back into our lane matchups. We're going to be looking for those 16 talent tiers, and maybe that's where we see a dynamic shift. But overall, you said it before, Otis, very strong in this first game. We'll see what they're able to do on the side of Gilly Shark in response.
And that was that was good patience. I mentioned that earlier that Gilly Shark has been so patient in this game. They had uh, Rexar and Misha waiting in that bush for probably a good 15 seconds. They were just kind of hanging out waiting for that DK to expire. And as soon as they did, he cut loose the boars. They collapsed on to the uh, support there, Malfurion, and, and got the kill. And then a pretty good clean disengage from Hodus after that. But we have another bush party here, Baja. They're setting up for it. Banshee will get a little bit of damage out, maybe trying to pull them into the uh, into the dangerous area, but it's not going to be the case. 16s are here for both sides. Chest looter clearing out top. There's a bit of a collapse coming out, at least onto Misha, but this is Misha, so they're just, I think they're going to just try and get another last right stack. It does stack. That's going to be two stacks for that mouthfeel. Now, they have a lot of pressure in the top lane. Joanna does scout out the Arthas rotating over, so Watson knows that there is at least a Jinxie Cat in the, in the, in the trees here. They're all looking for the root, but they actually released the boars. They're going to get some chase here, slowing down Thrall. Actually slowing down a, a few members in this. No follow-up with that Lunar Flare. It's just going to be the cleanse, and they start to back out. But I don't know if they're going to be able to get the kill here onto Watson. Actually, hold on. A lot of good damage is coming out. Blaze goes down. Kael'thuzad with that Shadow Fissure. And they pick off one. They could maybe go for a Malfi on top. And once again, it seems like Jinx or a Gilly Shark is just sharking around for the engages, really confident in their ability to get a kill. Otis is kind of picking their spots a little bit more, trying to get the good combos on the Kel'Thuzad. Four kills to zero, uh, but a, a pretty significant structure lead for Hodus. We have to see if the dynamic of the game is going to start changing as these death timers get longer. If Gilly Shark is the only team that's securing kills, the late game um, is going to be much more difficult for Hodus. That's, that's a big thing to note there is the death timers. We can see a lot of good pressure coming out from them if they can get a kill. Now they can grab Dragonite. You actually see them. They're available. They have the Kel uh, Kel'thas already sitting on the mid lane point. Kage here with that insta channel. There's no way they're able to deny it. They try and use the Shadow Fissure, but it's a second too late. And that will be a Dragonite picked up right away by the rooms of Gilly Shark. And so we moved in through mid lane, maybe trying to go for the same thing that Hoas just achieved with theirs. And it looks like uh, Kel'Thuzad opted not to... Uh through the insta spawn with the phylactery there holding on to that so uh interesting choice there because they could have denied that as arthas is in a lot of trouble and down he goes jinxie cat on arthas going down uh mostly to all that damage off of the blaze yeah uh is able to combo so much value for the friendly team that those chains are able just to set up so much the dragonite does go down they whittle down the mid lane fort but it doesn't go down completely and that's just going to be returning to the lanes, waiting for that Arthas to come back. Malfield pushing out top lane once again. Looks like the Bruiser Camp will be buffing that lane. We do have the same call coming out from Heroes United States with the Sentinel. It lands on one, so they know that at least they're down there. Both these teams too, Baja, man, they're not compounding errors. They're, they're kind of cutting their losses when they lose somebody. There have been no multiple deaths by either side. It's always been... A single kill in either direction. They kind of know when they should be getting out of there and really clean disengages all around. Just a really a fantastic clean game so far. It's been a great back and forth between the two teams. I, I really got to say that here's the United States started very strong, but in this late game, it seems like they've been building some momentum on the side of Gilly Shark. Now, top lane, they're trying to open this up a little bit further, but bottom lane needs to be worried about. Busted Shield will go out. Phoenix is going to be out as well. Jinxie Cat taking a lot of damage. Pops the armor of the undead, trying to stay alive. We have Waterboy joining in as well. That will be the Shadowfisher. Silence is out. They're just trying to get that last right stack onto Jinxie Cat, but they're going to be able to tap well and heal up, so it won't be a, a case for them. Now, Waterboy and Watson are a little bit too low. That's going to be the root going out onto one. They find the kill on Joel. Last right stacks goes on a Jinxie Cat, ripping the soul of that of that Arthas. So it's a one and a half trade for uh, for one, as it's going to be the disengage. They don't take the keep, but they definitely take it down very low. Yeah, and that, that, I think that team fight, man, that has been just how this game is. These teams just they brawl back and forth. They they press all their buttons, and, and neither team getting a really hard advantage over the other. A kill here, a kill there. And that's really it. It's, it's going to be whichever team is able to finally secure that decisive team fight. You know, 19 levels, 16 minutes into the game, that it's probably going to take it home. Uh, in particular, if it's Hodus, because that bottom keep Baja is so low. They take out two, three, four members. They can march straight through that bottom lane if they're close enough and healthy enough. Kael'thas is putting in some damage from the side. That's going to be the Shadow Fissure coming out, trying to get the damage on, onto Kaimo Tripson, but they don't land it. 19s will here, be here for both teams in just a... Or excuse me, 20s will be here in just a second for both teams. As we do have both tanks also going to be up and just about every heroic off of cooldown. 
Top lane's grab. We don't have anyone in bottom just yet, and that's going to be no availability for Dragonite. But the nice use of the Sea Giants in the bottom lane for Gilly Shark will depressure any of those cat periodic catapults just to allow them to potentially not have to deal with a bottom lane keep gone. This is going to be channel, so everyone's going to be sharking around mid and Mongoose. They're they're waiting for they're waiting for the engage, and I think they're about to get it. Yeah, this could be the moment as the two teams clash here. Everybody pressing their buttons. It looks like uh, Misha is going to be the first to fall. Jinxie Cat eating all of the damage from Kel'Thuzad there. But uh, I think that armor proc there, keeping Jinxie Cat up, you mentioned it earlier, the, uh, it was a uh, Icebound Fortitude. So, so valuable if you press that button at just the right time. And uh, I think Jinxie Cat did there because it, it looked like that should have been a lot worse than it was. Yeah, only losing the Misha here is not the biggest deal on Earth. They are going to be able to channel top and bottom, which means that they can... They know what their plan is right here, so they're going to leave a couple people in mid. Rexar and Misha are going to be going into that top lane. Jinxie Cat and Kagakiri, Kamo Trips, and Stark setting up for this mid lane for now. As they've stalled out top lane, bottom lane seems like they're trying to bolster that up. They could go for a big flank into the enemy team. We can see, at least on the minimap, they're going for the safe rotation. The other thing to note is Kael'thuzad did not opt for the upgrade on Shadow Fissure. They're not going to be going and having the, the resets after hitting heroes, but they might not need it as Jinxie Cat taking a lot of damage here actually has to pop the Army of the Undead. That's a that's a huge talent to pull out of the enemy team. Now Hodus knows that they can, they can take an engagement without that buffer from Jinxie Cat as though they'll be on a 60 second cooldown here. And Misha taking a lot of damage. He's going to get some healing, but that will be a lot of good damage coming out. I don't know if uh, Last Rites wasn't used there. Okay. That will be mouthy on three stacks. Yeah, I think Jinxie Cat realized she was in a pretty rough spot there, kind of stumbling into uh, all the members of HOTUS, and decided to hit that R button better safe than sorry. You know, if she went down there, that was going to be a really long respawn timer. Speaking of going down, Thrall is in trouble, and down he goes. A big kill there coming out by here is going to say Twilight Dream, and then blinking away, but it may not matter with actually Blaze got Rainer on the backside with all that Kel'Thuzad damage. And there's coming more. Gilly Shark might be in trouble, Baja. They get a couple kills here. That's going to be the Howling Blast connecting as well. And they're trying to turn around onto Kel'Thuzad. Jub Jub getting some great healing out. That blink with the... Just utilizing the heroic just to get out of that, that sticky situation was a great call from Jub Jub. Now they have Waterboy and friends chasing into this. Misha trying to slow this down as best they can. And they're turning on to Misha. They want to get another stack for last rights. There it's going to be. And while Misha doesn't have the longest death timer on the uh, in the world, that is still huge for the, for the uh, mouthfeel to be able, be able to have that cooldown reduction sitting at four stacks on that already. We have Toronto rotating up into top to try and stall this out, but I don't think it's going to work out. Oh, wait, no. Fire they have not me. quick enough with the Sentinel, and that will be third dragon into the game going over to the members of Heroes of the United States, and you can see the posturing for this. They want to rotate this into bottom lane, but a lot of good damage goes out. Nice stasis going out from Chest Looter as Misha just popped back up, but the Shadow Fissure gets them regardless. Rexar goes flying, and Dragonite pushing in through bottom lane. Yeah, with that that 60 second death timer coming up, and that bot keeps so low, I was wondering if they were eyeballing four, but I think it's going to be a double keep play. They're probably going to burn through this mid keep and then rotate onto what's left of the bottom one, I imagine, because it's really not going to take take much to finish off that bottom keep. Yeah, we're 20 we're 20 minutes into this game, so this Dragonite hits very, very hard so far, and uh, you can see right there, one hit really chunked that out, and you can see the posturing. They're unsure if they can end with this. It, it, they could try and get some core damage, but they'll be very far up in the lane. Also to note, top lane is getting a lot of catapult pressure stacking up, and that really could be something they need to worry about on the side of Heroes United States in a few moments here. But this is going to be their ping in for core. They want to try and go on in this. That's going to be Rexar still down for 14 seconds. The delay that they did might be the availability. But as I said before, this Dragonite hits so hard, already dropping near 50% on the core. And I think this is going to be game number one going over to Heroes of the United States. GG's. That was, uh, that was quite a game. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great game. Uh, actually, Heroes of the United States making a little bit of a statement there. They've been kind of mid-pack, but uh, I think that is only the second map Gilly Shark has lost this season, I believe. Yeah, it. Uh, I do believe they lost like last Monday or the Monday before. Uh, they lost, they dropped one map to another team and uh, yeah, this will be their second map they, they've dropped so far. Still, still the top team, but definitely showing that here's the United States is a team that uh, strikes a little bit of a fear in their heart 
Oh, Minion Miners. Minion Miners. Uh, That's right. Th yeah. Thanks to Jason clarified that. Shout out to Jason who moved the camera around the entire game right there, and we just got to cast. Yeah, you know, we, we kind of alluded to it earlier, but the past two seasons, it's kind of been the inverse of this. It's been here is the United States that's been at the top of the standings for most of the season and kind of Gilly Shark hovering around mid-pack. Gilly Shark gets hot in the playoffs. They pull off an upset or two, and they keep meeting Hodas in the, in the B East finals. This season, a little bit of the uh, script flipping here in the regular season as far as standings go, but not so much in the results as I think we have to go on upset alert, Baja. Well, we could see an upset here, but if Gilly Shark wants to bring it back, they got to start the reverse sweep, and that's uh, they got to they got to take two more games where we could see Hodas actually be the ones who who win this out. Um, and I just found out what map it is, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make the lobby really quick because I want to find out who's gonna take this. I am ready already. <laughs> so we are going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. It looks like. Do you know who selected that map? It is going to be Gilly Shark who uh, opted for Tomb of the Spider Queen here. All right. So teams, uh, teams piling in. Big factor that game Baja Kelthazad on a map that's very skirmishy and team fight heavy. Did it, does it going to warrant a ban coming out by Gilly Shark? Are we going to see a Kelthazad ban? That was the one thing that I was wondering is if we would be able to see Kilthazad pop up again, or if it's going to be one of those situations where no, you don't you don't let it through. And Tomb of Spider Queen is definitely a map where you actually can play Kilthazad very very well, and it will get a ton of value for you. Once again, it's a rotation heavy based map, and that's a place where you you see Kilthazad get so much value because of the availability of four bodies that you can sit there and get a stack on your uh, Frost Nova as well as those chains. It's, it's a great map for Kill so I would say it's it's something that Gilly Shark should consider, and uh, that might open up avenues for other heroes that we might have not seen. But we are we got our lobby here, and and I'm itching to go. Yeah, typically when you get a Kelthazad, the answer um, generally is you just try to avoid laning with him as much as you can. Just stay away from him, so it, it you know prolongs how long it takes to stack. But but on Tomb. That's that's really hard to do, just kind of with the dynamic of how the map is played, how close everything is to each other. So I, mean, I think the play that game one warrants a ban, and I, I would be surprised if we didn't see it, I think. Yeah, I think I, I'd i say you get rid of it. It's it's It was way too strong, and that, that power from the, the phylactery stacks, or excuse me, the Master of the Cold Dark stacks, uh, hitting that 30 mark and that 75% spell power increase, you can't you can't let this see you can't let that go through again. We'll see though. We do have ban phase coming out on Tomb of Spider Queen here, and um I think it's gonna be probably the Samuro. Or we'll see if uh here's the United States are feeling a little confident after game number one and they're just like, you know what, the Samuro, we don't have to worry about it. Because that could be Gilly Shark's entry to that game three. That is true. Um and Samuro is one of the most infuriating heroes to play against <laughs> when he's played well. Uh, um, but part of that uh, on the larger maps is the murking and the map manipulation. And on Tomb, that may be a little bit less of a factor than on some of the bigger maps. He's still annoying in the team fighting, but, but at least the map manipulation part of it isn't in the equation as much. So I suppose if you were to let him through, this might be the map where it happens. Oh, Doom of Spider Queen's still a great map for Samuro. Actually, pretty much every yeah, map exactly. is good for Samuro. <laughs> yeah. um, and I don't know if this is, here's the United States trying to trying to just, you know, pull a little tongue-in-cheek here and just, you know, pulling the entire ban counter and then also banning Sylvanas first instead of Samuro. I would expect it to be coming out. I, I don't think we're going to be getting the, the green boy in. Uh, That's yeah. exactly the case. It was a little bit of a juke. They're trying to, trying to just, you know... Trying to give us a little bit of hope, but this is also uh, this is a great map for a lot of heroes that we haven't seen and a lot of heroes that don't get played too often. Could see something like a Cho'Gall pop out. Could see things like Asbadan. Could see also Orphea with a different stack and quest, trying to get those minions in between rotations, buffing the way that Chomp works. That's typically not what we get, but I'm always hoping for those for those oddities. And we'll see we'll see what happens. As, you know, we've we've had some role changes and some uh, reworks. Zeratul out of this game as well. I mean, I guess they, they really let that ban timer go all the way down, and I guess the debate was Zeratul or 
Kelfazad? I mean, both super powerful when uh, in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, that's a pretty tough choice to make either way, to be honest. Hmm. And I think they're deciding that right now, too. It, do we want to go into the Kael'thuzad right at the start, or do we try and wait for it at the end? We just showed our hand a little bit with that game number one. High priority onto the Joanna for the members of Heroes of the United States for game number two. Definitely showing that Joanna is a major priority, and why not? She works so well in this map with, with being able to group the minions. Blessed Shield is such a great lockdown for team fights, and, well, Subdue just gets that slow and potentially that punish. The side of Gilly Shark, we got a Brightwing and Rexar. High priority under the Rexar still coming out from them in that solo lane, but Brightwing very early for the heals. Yeah, it looks like Gilly Shark pretty pretty confident, not really overreacting or overcorrecting to that loss. Uh, but if we're gonna see Kelthazad, I would imagine it has to be here, right? Do you you don't risk another ban if that's something that you want if you're Hotus? Well, that's going to be Kael'thas instead. The other KT. <laughs> I mean, Kael'thas, Kael'thas here with with uh, Belfiri and Joanna. That's that's a great yeah. composition. I mean, the the old the old combo was uh, Stitches instead of Joanna for the hook and gravity laps, all that big blow up. But Joanna still offers a ton of value into the Kael'thas, and I'm liking that pickup for Heroes in the United States. Band phase coming through. Mm, you don't have to consider the Kael'thas out anymore, as they have their Kael'thas. They probably won't double mage. Maybe you consider the Malthiel into that, that Rexar so they're not stacking up that last rates off the Misha Bear, and that's exactly the case we're seeing right here. Yeah, you called it there. Uh, on the flip side, I wonder what Hotus is thinking. Um, and I like that Johanna Kelthos pairing too, that the early part of Tomb, you know, pre 10, is so rotation dependent between the top and the mid. Johanna, jo and Kael'thas can just obliterate those lanes and move so, so fast between top and mid lane as a Medivh ban coming out. <laughs> they must have watched your first set there, Baja. No, uh, they definitely saw something there. Is the, they're like, yeah, no no Medivh for Stark, no Samura for Stark, and Kage, you don't get the Sylvanas. Rainer, though, will be picked up once again. We still need to see a main tank as well as some extra damage coming out. We could see something like maybe like a Li Ming, try and get some of that poke in between the lanes, but they're going to wait and see what the rest of the draft looks like before they pick up that final mage. And Diablo, very strong here. You mentioned it before. It hasn't been prioritized very much. This is definitely the map where we can see that happen, and that's where we're going to be seeing it pop out. Yeah, lots of walls to slam people into um, due to the nature of the map, how quickly you're bouncing between the lanes. He actually collects souls faster than he does here on a lot of other maps because you're just blowing up those lane minions going from top to mid. So it's a great Dibbles map. Sonya will be picked up as well as Nazebo. Here's the United States saying, we're going to a 20 game. We want Vile Infection. And with that, that shows what their entire draft is for Here's the United States, and they have to pick up their last little bit of damage on the side of Gilly Shark. I personally say, definitely go for that Li Ming. There's some reset options for, uh, for her, as well as a lot of good poke to come out into some of the... Uh, nesters or the turn-in points. The other thing to consider maybe is like a Genji if you want to get a little bit of dive or maybe a Grey Main on top of that. Not too sure what they'd round it out with, but it's going to be Maev. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Set up with Diablo is really strong. Raynor can still get value off of that. rexor has got uh, a little bit of play for some slow to kind of set up Maev for that, that Warden's Cage. And uh, I think it's going to come down to if Heroes of the United States can get to 20 and get that Nazebo stacked and get that big uh, poison value in the later half of the game, or if Gilly Shark are able to burn it down before 20 and uh, take a quick game. I think you're 100% right. And I think in the uh, you know early to mid game, uh, before we get to that that big 20 power spike, um, I, I wonder if Johanna is going to struggle. I mean, Maev and Diablo crash really hard. And Johanna doesn't have hard peels. You know, she doesn't really hold someone there. So I wonder if Watson is going to struggle a little bit to keep him off of the, the softer targets in the back, the Kael'thas and the Blaze, how hard uh, Jinxie and Stark are going to try to dive past that Johanna onto those vulnerable targets. Hmm. I'm just, I'm looking at the two drafts and I'm trying to decide who I would actually think is going to be taking this. And, and I'm really not, I'm not too sure. Like, I, I don't know who, who I think is, is the overall stronger team, but... We'll find out here as we got this. Game number two on the left-hand side, we got Heroes of the United States with Blaze playing the Kael'thas. Jub Jub on the Malfurion, Watson on the Joanna, Waterboy TDK on the Sonya, and Sly DH on the Nazebo. 
And for the red team, Gilly Shark, we have Jinxie Cat on Diablo, Kage Girl on Rainer, I believe. They're moving pretty fast for me. Kaimo Tripson on Brightwing, did I say it right? Stark on Maiev and Chess Looter, back on Rexar and Misha. Mid lane crash from both teams. We do have Nazebo holding level one. It's going to be spider build here. So it's going to be having all the little damage chasing after single targets throughout this. Also, the mana return is very, very powerful just for extra lane sustain. Shield glare coming out from Watson to check Stark out in that bush. And we have a couple, couple roll changes here, at least hero swaps. We typically see Stark on that Rainer, but going to be swapping over to Maya for this game. Number two on Tuna Spider Queen. And some fan and I have resets. A little bit of poke between the two teams, but it looks like this is just going to be the start of our rotations and we're just looking for gems and trying to stack up a couple quests here and there and the other thing to keep an eye on too um not so much now in the early game is rexar and nisha will be in the bottom but once we get past the laning phase and getting to where these teams are going to group a little bit more um Kael'thas is pretty effective into rexar and nisha it's one extra body to pass around that living bomb so we'll keep an eye on that too as these teams start to uh to group up in the mid to late game Firestorm with a little bit of poke here and there, trying to stack up the Jinxie Cat, but she needs to be able to get out. Face Shift comes in from Brightwing, but it's not quick enough. They pick up the extra gems that they do drop from that death, and that will be first blood over to Heroes of the United States. Camo Tripson getting a little speed boost and just rejoining the friendly team. Yeah, that's the uh, patented Mongoose early Diablo death. Every time I play him, I forget I don't have souls yet, and I'll die like once in the first 90 seconds of the game, pretty much guaranteed. And, uh, it's just you're not used to having uh, low souls yet in the early game until you get them stacked up. Um, they do pick up the uh, soul shield at level 1 to deal with some of that ability damage coming in from Kael'thas to be a little more tanky for the friendly team. Watson already sitting on 14 gems. We'll go ahead and get those turned in, but Kage says, No, I got a couple. I got a little pepper for you there. The fire stomps out as well just to make sure they back out and there's you no know, face checking that push. Be able to grab some regen globes and continue their rotations as Kael'thas is looking for that mana attic, but they find a water boy in a bit of a bad spot. Fan and Ives goes out. They need one more auto, and this Sonya looks like they're going to be able to make it through the gate in time, and they're not able to get the kill. Water boy going over the wall with just barely any health gets the full hearth, and they'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, less than 50, really uh, <laughs> getting out by the skin of her teeth there. A nice rotation coming out by Gilly trying to get the uh, solo lane pickoff down there. Yeah, mid lane is going to be pressured out. They just, as I said, it's, it's rotations for gems and just trying to make sure you're not dropping too many. Also trying to get Nazebo and Kael'thas stacked up as quickly as possible. Same thing for the Diablo. Nice gravity laps catching Kaimo Tripson through the bush right there. And they get one, they try and get the Yarmo Bind onto the Joanna, but she just pops the air and skin and says, nah, I'll walk right away from that. I'm not going to try and lose any sort of 25 gems right now. Waterboy back in the lane, but Misha and Rex are heckling so very good, trying to spin to get some healing, but they know that play and they back right off. Yeah, really smart by Chester. He's pulling back as soon as Sony gets the uh, whirlwind there. Not letting her getting any self-sustain, and then I assume we're not down there, but sending Misha right back on her as soon as that thing is done. Nice use of the zombie wall, pinching Jinxie Cat in this wall. That's going to be the cleanse coming out from Kaimo Chips and Face Ship will be coming out as well. They want to keep them alive. Gravity Laps connects on the one. Umbra Bind pulling in a couple others. Watson, a little forward. Bex right out just to anchor for the team. Great use of that Joanna just being so tanky. Waterboard clearing out bottom lane as Chess Sitter will be forcing up that wave consistently. Even an experience a little bit more so on the side of Heroes of the United States. And we're going to have the six talent tier pick or seven talent tier picked up fairly soon. We also had Malfurion a little bit late on that pickup, but did go for the Vengeful Roots looking to stack that up and get a little extra damage with that tree ant. And we have, oh wait, right wing and top lane. Okay, I was about to say that gravity lapse was just right next to them, but Watson now trying to get right into this. This is going to be Trips is so very low. And they'll have to back out of there as Diablo Sailor only sitting at 68 souls, not fully stacked themselves. Yeah, kind of in the middle of all this, uh, here's the United States has been sneaking in gems here and there, and they're, they're pretty close to the turn and only 12 more. Uh, and if they keep pressuring Gilly Shark back like they did in that top lane skirmish, they're going to get them in here pretty soon. Watson is actually only two gems away from being able to uh, turn the gems in all by himself. Ooh, water boy in this bottom once again getting away with 100 health. That's going to actually be Misha going down. They find a route on Kage. That's going to be a lot of good damage going out. Phase shift to start it, but I think it's canceled out by the Joanna in the mid lane with a condemn right there. They stall that out, and if I think if Kyle Tripson would have gotten down there, they might have been able to, to pick off another player, but 
not going to be the case. Seven to seven in levels, both teams available for the turn in. And a little bit more, actually, uh, the members of Ghillie Shark are potentially... Uh, actually, you know what? It's, it's fairly close when it comes to gems. And we also do have those spiders being finished out by the Nazebo, picking up the other two uh, spider talents at four and seven, being able to get the extra damage as well as some of the return onto the Mana Stark getting caught in the zombie wall and they're able to back out as the, as the spiders chase the Shabir right out of there. Yeah, despite the uh, Nazebo comp, Heroes of the United States, they're, they're hanging in there, you know, with a, kind of a late game scaling comp, really trading blows well. Watson going to drop off 10 gems, leaving them only two gems short of the first turn into the game. However, Stark has 18, not able to get him in, interrupted by Sonya, who now has to run for dear life, is able to get away. Stark trying one more time. Johanna will definitely be there to interrupt. And Hodas finishing off the last two gems uh, off camera there, the top turn in. And first Webweaver going over to Heroes of the United States. Well, we were descending. Bottom lane is going to be opened up a little bit further. They've got quite a few down here. I don't think that's actually going to be their play as they make a move for top. We do also have this clue being cleared out by Gilly Shark in top lane. They want to just at least make it this lane as quickly as possible. We do have Jinxie Cat full up on souls as well. That Diablo is a very, very tanky terror. And this is just going to be the Web Weaver in top lane at the front gate. If they get the clear under this, that'll be beneficial, but they want to move into mid and do that before that's even really taking out too much. They delayed out top a little bit to open up mid. Really great plays coming out from them, but they've rotated down. That's going to be Vault of the Ward, and they catch two in the Zombie Wall. A lot of good poison damage coming out of Kaimo Tripson, and that will be first kill of this push as the Web Weaver pushes in a little bit further. Phantom Knives are going out from Stark, but they're not able to get the recess in looking for. Yeah, fantastic uh, Zombie Wall there followed up with the... Uh... The root, the great lawn being laid out by Mephurian, and right in there, their towers there where they had nowhere else to go. Jinxie caught in that lawn one more time, not able to escape. Two unanswered kills, maybe three if Stark goes down. Vault of the Wardens a little bit early, but still able to escape. Heroes of the United States looking strong and on the verge of heroics. No, heroics are going to be there, and we can actually see what they'll be picking up here. If it's going to be the Slappy Ghost, or if it's going to be Slappy Boy uh, on that uh, Nazebo, going to be either going into the... Uh, oh, hold on. Water Boy. I was thinking that Chess would be stepping up onto this, as they do have everyone kind of showing up in mid, but not going to be the case here. Um, it is going to be Gargantuan, so we aren't going to be seeing any sort of uh, ghost form across the map for that Nazebo player. But it's still going to be Blessed Shield. No leap for the Sonya. It's going to be Phoenix for that Kael'thas and Malfurion. Probably going to go for the Tranquility for some extra healing. We'll see, though. Nice use, though. I actually do got to know. We do have Containment Disc for Maev. Not going to be going for the Warden's Cage. Looking to isolate one member. And uh, Malfurion still holding that 10. I'm wondering if they're going to go for the Silence. So that way that that, silent, or that that Containment Disc can't really go out. They get it onto the Joanna. Uh, see what they're able to do with this Mongoose. Yeah, it makes sense. The uh, Warden's Cage doesn't really have, like, a Jaina to follow up on it, but Watson is going to be in trouble. I think Irestein has already been used. It has Johanna going down, Gilly Shark roaring back, picking up the kill and securing the turn-in. I mean, so I like that Containment Disc instead of the Warden's Cage because there's just... Usually with the uh, Warden's Cage, you have some kind of Wombo to set up on top of it, um, and, and those tools just aren't there in the comp that uh, Gilly Shark is running, so often to go with uh, the Containment Disc instead. It's going to get them some very good value as they do pick up Web Weavers themselves. Those have descended into the lanes. Do and still have uh, the Hyperion up and available for Kage Carry. They can use that as a season tool if they would like. Bottom lane has the Sony trying to do their best to clear this out. Misha might be able to force them behind the wall. Phoenix is up from mid, but I think they've got as much value as they can up there. Overpower coming up from Jinxie. Containment disc onto the Nazebo. Blessed Shield goes out as well. And Rexar is just going to be going down to the bottom lane to that Sonya. Take a peek at that at some other point, but this is just going to be the pressure in. Stark trying to get that damage out. That's going to be the blink forward, maybe. Jinxie Cat, very low. They don't have that souls. Hyperion comes out from Kage Kiri. Jub Jub is up very low themselves, but able to get right out of there. Kamo trips him low as well. Nexus Force is doing work as they picked up two kills and they forced back the members of Gilly Shark as they also lost the Rexar in bottom lane. Yeah, Jinxie went super hard to try to get the Nazebo there. Kind of got herself in a rough spot. And we have here in the United States rotating straight to boss. Something we saw with those uh, web weavers there, the comp for Cures the United States has really fantastic anti-siege between the Nazebo and the Kael'thas, uh, able to defend so, so well uh, and really make uh, things difficult for Gilly Shark. And the flip side, we saw the opposite, where Gilly Shark doesn't have a whole lot of great anti-siege coming out the other direction. So 
And let's watch for Hodas to really capitalize on these Web Weaver turn-ins. And they're trying to get Boss turn-in, and it looks like they're going to get it, Baja. I don't think they're going to be able to stall out the turn-in, but if they can burn down the boss before it really gets any value, that'll be huge for them. You can see them already trying to grab the Siege Giants in bottoms, but they do have that Bruiser Camp for mid lane. Boss will be around half health. They back out and they say, you know what? We don't have 13s. We're just going to have to give over a fort, play behind our keep front gate, try and get that soak through Rexar in the bottom lane. Sonya could try and stop that, but they need to deal with the mid lane Bruisers as that pretty much mitigates the web weaver there and uh looks like rexar did hearth back they don't have the 13 still they're just gonna have to play behind their gate play a little turtled up and hope that they can at least whittle these uh web weavers and this boss down phoenix comes out for the zone to see if they're able to push him further and we can see with rainer being the only really range damage coming in the gilly shark they're really struggling to push back these waves and this boss man Hyperion coming out, Facia from the Bright Wing. They do, they, they are to use Containment Disc as well. Keep has gone down. Boss has got a sliver of health. Web Weaver, very, very healthy in this top lane. Looks like the members of Heroes United States are gonna back off. They say this is as much value we get here. Let's rotate into another lane, try and push that out further. Maybe get a double keep if we can, or at least take down this front gate. This is a mid lane that's very stacked forward. Waterboy does have uh, the chains forward, and they also do have that Wrath of Berserker up and available if they want to go into it. The silence is out from the Malfurion. If they can, if they step up a little too far here, knock back from Jub Jub to make sure that that's not going to be happening. This is going to be the bottom lane falling as well. It's going to be the lightning breath coming out from the Di Diablo. Silence out from the Malfurion. They need to back up. The zombie wall is way too good around Jinxie Cat. The containment just went out, but it didn't connect onto anyone. Kama Tripson trying to blink forward. The fire storm is going to keep them alive for the time being. And that's going to be a huge play coming out from Gilly Shark not to drop anyone right there. That's still going to be a solid level lead over the members of Gilly Shark as Hodas di disengages and they don't have another web lead for another 40-ish gems. You know, for a, for a comp coming out by Hodas that was just a hang out till 20, then we win. If you're Gilly Shark, you, you really can't like how this game is going. Not just because you're behind, but because you're behind to a team that has a scaling Nazebo and a scaling Sonya. If they're struggling now, they're going to probably struggle even harder the later in level this game goes. And so this is going to be gem turn in for uh, Gilly Shark is available, but you can see them the way they're sharking around. They're going to throw Sonya over to the Bruiser camp so that way she's able to just get that on her own. Kael'thas will be checking out the bottom turn in. They also have a couple members sharking around the top turn in as well. They can just wait for the 16s to kind of flood into them because if they chase out into the lanes too far, they could be picked off. Actually, look at the minimap right now. Look at that posturing in for bottom lane. They're going in for the flank onto chest leader. I don't know if they're going to be able to catch them. That will be the bless shield going out. A lot of bursts will be there and that is a dead Rexar. That's a huge pickup for Hodas, being able to just catch them out of position like that. Now you can see them all sitting in these vents. They see them as they're going to be rotating. They back right out. And they say, you know what? We don't want to give up another death. We have to back out and try and get our 16s as it crashes into us. But no turn in availability, no boss, no camps. They'll just try and whittle down these gates with a Phoenix and uh, some Nazebo pressure. Yeah, chest leader stepping out a little bit too far there. Great job by Hodas to recognize it. Stay out of vision, manipulate the rotation, and get a great timely kill onto Rexar there. And now laying siege to this bottom keep. Kage Girl is very low, but a huge engage by Maev and Diablo. Icebox popped by Nazebo. He is out of it and running. Start getting fan of knife reset after fan of knives reset. But it's actually Maev, Brightwing, and Sonya falling almost simultaneously in what's turning into a bloodbath. They're trying to use Misha to collect all the gems that were just dropped, and they got the majority of them. This bottom lane keep is getting sieged and dropped down. They try and jump in on this. They've already taken out the Sony. The Bless Shield comes out. Kagakiri a little bit low. The boars are going to be released from that Rexar. They try and step up a little bit further, but the keep does go down. Jinxie Cat rotates out, and that's also going to be trying to heal up. They do a full souls, and that's going to be 112 stacks sitting on that Nasebo. Fairly low on the stacking side, but with the mo momentum that they currently have, that's not going to be the case needed if they can just pressure in with another web weaver turn in is available once again for gilly shark but as noted they have no keeps and they really need to push out their lanes so turn in at this point more or less buys them time and allows them to maybe regain control of the map but it won't push out and get forts as, as to be expected but this is going to be a, an attempt for the core here mongoose yeah this game is really hodas's to lose for gilly shark to win this they'll need i mean something like back-to-back -back huge team fight wins you know they, they just have so much ground to make up. They're pinned back in their own base. Nice ice block there by Nazebo to get out of the Umbral Bind. And Hodas just uh, backing up. 
uh, Gilly Shark trying not to let them, figuring this is maybe the best fight they take. There goes the Lightning Breath. Both teams coming in. He's stepping in for a huge Twilight Dream, and he hits it. Everybody's so low on Gilly Shark. Misha falls. Brightwing falls. Hodas on the warpath. Gilly Shark in retreat. This is just going to be... Yeah, they got the setup for the potential core here. They don't have a huge wave in with them, but a lot of them are coming in, and they've all got catapults, which will siege in fairly well here. They do have one down. That bright... The bright wing will be coming up in 23 seconds. Diablo charging out. Overpower will be there. They still have full soul, so this is going to be very tanky on the Diablo side. The core is falling below shielding and is losing its health. They do have Waterboard TDK so very low. They also do lose their Wrath of Berserker. Stark diving in, trying to get the value here. Containment just goes out under one. Core health is falling. The catapults aren't being addressed in top lane. That's going to be game number two. Over to the side of here's the United States. They clinch the upset. GG. Well played. I mean, you look at the standings, Baja. That was a that was a surprising result. I mean, knowing knowing the teams, it's not a surprising result. Uh, but how this season has went, it is definitely uh, surprising. And not so much that Hodas got the two zero, uh, but the manner in which that game two went was was really one sided, really dominant play uh, by here's the United States. There, they seem to be peaking right at the last couple weeks of uh, the regular season eyeballing to make a, a playoff run they looked really good yeah here's it in states bringing it back trying to put themselves in 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 contest for this and definitely showing case that they could be the team that brings in the upsets uh and i hey i don't hate it this it was a really really good back and forth between those two teams and here's united states showing up and really taking this this uh these two games in this best three series mongoose this is an absolute blast that we just had yeah this was a. Uh... A great set, a lot of fun. One way, when I saw this game pop up on the calendar, um, it, w it was one that uh, I definitely wanted to grab, and getting to grab it with you is all the more fantastic. I don't think we've actually been on the same set since Deck the Brawls, so it's been a hot minute. Oh, Deck the Brawls. Oh, Deck the Brawls. <laughs> I can't wait for this year. <laughs> It was so much fun. No, I, I had an absolute blast. These these were such good games, and, and congratulations to Heroes in the United States as they take the uh, the best of three series against Gilly Shark. Yeah, nothing more to say, really. Those guys, man, thoroughly impressed with uh, oh, yeah. the, with the game two in particular. Um, we knew that they were capable of it, uh, but uh, something else to know that they can do it, and then and then seeing them actually uh, pull it off, uh, picking up a big yeah. three points too, because they're kind of down in the glut of B East where there's a bunch of teams really, really knocking each other out for those last few playoffs points, uh, playoff spots. So, so they needed those points too. And, and that's, that's the thing is like these late, these late points in some of the later weeks, they really can kind of add up and just put you in that spot for, for a contestion. But uh, we'll see if here's the United States is able to keep their momentum or if tonight was just, uh, they brought out the big guns cause they knew that they were going to be going up against the, the old rivals. Yeah. Looking forward to, uh, Seeing these two guys play again, hopefully in the playoffs, I guess. Not that I'm pulling for anybody, but I would not be opposed to seeing this one again. No, uh, they, they've been in the they've been in so many playoff uh, games together. I honestly kind of hope the same. I mean, if if I would love to see a rematch, the the one team thus far in season number five of Nexus Gaming series to be taking down uh, the number one seed so far, and, and almost well, actually, the undefeated team being defeated tonight, really. Here's the United States showing up and, you know, showing that gods can bleed, I guess you could say, if you want to quote 300. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, message sent to the rest of the division, too, there. I said, man, this is this is the time to really put it all together. Uh, right before uh, the playoffs are going to start, next week will be the last regular season week for Div B before we go into those playoffs. So this is the time you want to be hitting on all cylinders, and, and HOTUS no doubt was. They look so good. Oh, yeah. No, we'll see. We'll see if they're able to do it in the, in the weeks to come. But uh, no, it was it was a blast, and and I had so much fun with these games. Well, um, anything else, or I think I think we're done. I think that does wrap it up for us for uh, the Monday Night Showcase. Indeed, Baja. Oh, hey, do we want to get somebody in here for an interview? Is is one of those guys around? We we should we should if we can. I would I would have to friend them. Who see who they want to send. If you can't, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm good. Give those guys some love because they earned it.
We'll see if they want to join us here in just a second. Um, I am curious to find out if, if they've even showed any of their, their major uh, playmakers. Like, Kael'th is odd, yeah, Kael'thos did some great work, but is that really all they have to... Like, are those, like, are it's like, oh, we figured out, like, Blaze on Mages. Like, that's something you just have to worry about? Or is that just like, hey, this is just a composition that we're comfortable with, and it'll be easy-peasy. We'll be able to, to run almost any mage, or is it just like, we get Kael'th is odd, we, we body? Yeah, you know, that's actually a question I asked uh, last week in one of the casts that I, I forget who I was having this discussion with, but, uh, you know, if you're if you're in the position of, say, Gilly Shark, and, and you're pretty much locked in, they're really not going to fall too far because they've been so good, so many wins, so strong this season. As you're coming down the stretch, do you want to keep stuff close to the fest and just kind of be standard? And the flip side of that, if you're one of those teams that's really in the gutter trying to get into the playoffs and advanced uh, in position, are you more apt to to show your hand and and show those strategies to get those wins when you need them? I, I think it's an interesting uh, interesting questions for how how different captains and different teams uh, approach the end of the season. And I think, yeah. Also, uh, shout out to Murda who just raided. So welcome, welcome everyone. We are currently trying to get the interview with uh, I think it's maybe Watson. They just messaged me in Discord asking. Yeah, if, I, I got him going. Perfect. All right. Well, you will be on that, and we will get them in here in just a second. We can ask them all about their Joanna play as well as uh, what their uh, Kel'Thuzada mage situation is. But thank you once again to Murda for the raid, as we'll be wrapping up uh, the showcase in just a minute. Uh, but we still got that interview. If we yeah, can get them, if, if they can, if we can get Discord things to work for us. It's, yeah. Uh, see, this is why I always preemptively do it, and this is the one time I didn't. See, I know. Disc I know. Discord, please. Discord, please. <laughs> We're just gonna, all right. Ignore the ugly screen, guys. Ignore it. It'll only be there. We'll get we'll get Baja's beautiful face back in just a second. Oh, there he is. See, he's back. Only like fifteen seconds. While well, I sent a Didn't friend. Even no, nobody Didn't even, even saw see anything. <laughs> Didn't even see it. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll get we'll get them in here in just a second. Trying to get the um discord permissions to be nice to us but not that big of a deal and the other thing too is to see if um i don't think that they really to the spider queen was the map choice of gilly shark for game number two as well so they're really not showing any map priority either just so showing that they don't want to go to towers of doom which realistically that's just a hard map in general because it can be turned around in so many ways shapes and form against the enemy team so yeah towers of doom i'd take that right out of there because it's just a hard time to sometimes play that as you can get countered very easily and joining us is Watson. We did it, Baja. We figured it out. Welcome, Watson. How's it going? It's going great. That was a, that was an amazing matchup that we just had. Um, we got some questions for you, but specifically, Kel'Thuzad. Going into game number one, that was some really good play coming out from Blazing that Kel'Thuzad. Is that showing much of uh, your hero picks, or is this more or less just uh, something fun that you know how to run, and it worked out really well? Uh, we actually ran that... Um... I don't know if it was identical to that composition. I think we had Arthas previously. And okay. we had run that almost same composition. I think it was Arthas and Kel'Thuzad. And um, when, I think we won on Dragonshire in about 10 minutes, 10 or 11 minutes. And so Ooh. at that point, we had decided that Kel'Thuzad on Dragonshire is not a bad thing. So, so yeah, we, we played it earlier this season. Wasn't really a, uh, there's no pocket pick there. And so, yeah, basically not really showing anything in, in the sense of just like any sort of priority in draft or, um, you know, these are the heroes that like, oh, you ban this and, you know, we're a little bit, uh, there's a little chink in the armor in that sense where, you know, you took out our top player, but it's more or less, it's just like, no, we just, we got a great Kel'Thuzad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Blaze plays a stellar Kel'Thuzad. And I think with uh, running the Malthiel and the Thrall as well, it allows yeah. Johanna to kind of just float between mid and bottom, so Thrall can kind of serve as the pseudo tank, especially with the the Arthas being there. There's a lot less threat on the KTZ, so we just need a couple of roots to, to fend them off and keep KTZ healthy. The other quick question I had before I pass it over to Mongoose is um, the Malthiel pickup. When it was a little bit, I think it was a little bit later in the draft, and they already picked up their Rexar. Was it always the intention to run it and have it kind of uh, stack easily off of the Misha? Or was that just a, you know, a, a nice coincidence in the fact that it's just like, oh crap, we can stack off this Misha so consistently? We actually didn't know how that matchup would go, so we okay. play Rexar too. We saw the Rexar. We thought, okay, does Malthiel work against the Rexar, the new Rexar? I don't know. Let's try it. So that was really just uh, let's try it and see what happens. We felt like Mouthhill would at least 
sustain in the lane and not okay. necessarily lose it and then put enough threat on to Rexar that if we could at least control the point, you know, every once in a while, right? You know, that we're not going to mm -hmm. dominate it the way a Rexar could, but we also don't let him just sit there and, you know, leave the bear stationary. So it was okay. kind of that one was a let's flex this and see what happens. Oh, it was a great flex and it worked out really well. I'll throw you over to Mongoose. First of all, congratulations, guys. Um, you know, if you've been around uh, NGS for a few seasons, uh, you know how much you guys get to play them. And while it's no surprise that you guys beat them, because clearly you guys are capable of, that game too, how one-sided it was, you guys were in complete control. Talk about kind of uh, the comms in that game. What were you guys saying? Was it just kind of business as usual? Or were you a little surprised at uh, how, how hard you were controlling that? I think the surprise came when we got three keeps as early and realized that, hey, we've got three forts up. We're good. We're in good shape. And that was where I think the surprise came in. And then I think we ended up getting the, the bottom keep. Um, positionally, it just seemed like Gilly Shark was just kind of out of, I don't know, I don't, out of sync, I guess, in that second game. Because honestly, uh, Rexar, it seemed awkward for, I think, I don't recall who was playing Rexar, but regardless, they were bottom lane by themselves, Rainer and Brightwing mm -hmm. both showed top. Like, it became abundantly yeah. clear, Rexar's by himself. Mm -hmm. That's 17 gems. We get those, that's it. They don't have a turn in again. Like, we get, we kill them, and we get a keep out of that. And we were able to do that. And it just, it was, it was surprising. that They just seemed a little bit out of sorts. But I'm not sure. I don't know that that was, it Maybe I think they had played a, a match earlier today. They did. So, I don't know. Yep. You know, maybe it's just you get tired hands at some point. You, you play for, you know, three, four hours straight. True. Definitely the case. So you guys showed up and really played some amazing games. They, they was, it was so much fun to cast this. Um, before we let you out of here, any shots that you want to give? Uh, shout out to Stark, because he said he was going to get an interview. <laughs> uh, oh! <laughs> no, really. Uh Gilly Shark and Hodus have met up probably, I don't know, six times in the last like year and a half. We played each other quite a bit, and they're always really good and competitive games. So, uh, honestly, God, shout out to Gilly Shark because they're a great team. Enjoy playing with them. Um, shout out to my team uh, for showing up and playing really, really well tonight. Um, we were playing with the sub, uh, Clyde, who's new to the roster. Um, so, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, had a, a lot of really good zombie walls. And yeah. uh, that was, I mean, to me, like, if there's an MVP in that tomb game, it's the zombie wall. Like, that was, <laughs> it was intense. Every time it seemed, you know, Brightwing would try and tell you in, and there'd be a zombie wall waiting for him. And uh, so it was, that was pretty stellar. So shout out to uh, Clyde for showing up tonight. Uh, it was amazing games. It was so much fun to cast. And can't wait to see you further down in uh, the Nexus Gaming Series series to see uh, where you land when you're uh, pulling up sets like this. All right, well, thank you. And thanks so much. Mongoose. We, we, just, we just had an awesome best of three series. And uh, closing thoughts on uh, on our Monday night showdown? Um, a little surprised at the outcome. Not, not so much the outcome, but the way in which the outcome came about was a little surprising, but uh, really happy for HOTUS. And uh, excited to see the playoffs coming up. All these division races... Man, they're really, really close, and it's going to be a, an exciting end to the season for uh, for all these divisions jockeying for those last playoff spots. And uh, before we go, I'll be back here tomorrow night, but on the other end, the Tuesday night showdown, I will be playing Ooh. tomorrow. So tune in. It's a late one, 8.30 Pacific. Um, so if you're a night owl or uh, on the West Coast, come on by. Oh, that'll be an absolute blast, but... These have been awesome games, and uh, it's been an absolute blast to cast with you, Mongoose. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been hanging out, and also, once again, thanks to Murda for the raid. Thanks for the support, my friend. But I think that does it for us here on the Nexus Gaming Series channel. You all have a great night, and we'll see you in the Nexus. Good night.